Pastor Stephen Furtick's Sermon Review. Move in what you're made for. You were made to do more and accomplish more, but your insecurities are holding you back from doing so. The author of this sermon, Pastor Stephen Furtick, draws his inspiration for his sermon, which is themed, Move in what you are made for, from the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Today, God wishes to offer you a message for your insecurities, a message that would speak directly to your insecurities. Yet, he does not want to deal with it on a shallow level. He wants to deal with it on a much deeper level. We can learn a lot from the way God created us. Your first realization will be that God does not communicate with people on the surface level. A real word from God will never address the immediate concerns you have with your predicament on a surface level. For this reason, counsel can only help you to a limited extent. When you seek the advice of your friends, you provide to them only the information that you believe to be appropriate. They frequently provide you with sound guidance, despite the fact that they have little information. They are unaware of the more fundamental reasons behind why your relationship is falling apart. You have a close relationship with these people, yet you keep the information from them out of worry that they will evaluate you negatively, given the context. You are embarrassed about your situation. The good news is that your Heavenly Father is aware of all your imperfections and shame because He was the one who created you. Even before He made you, He had a clear picture of who you were. Because you are always finding fault and offering solutions, you are preventing yourself from experiencing any sense of calm in the circumstances you find yourself in. For His part, God, who knows everything, is uninterested in giving advice. He gives you solutions. As a result, while you are praying about the symptoms, God is already devising a treatment plan and a cure for the underlying condition that is causing the ailment. Because of this, we refer to him as the great physician. When you read the account of creation, you will realize that on the fifth day, God accomplished something unique that He did not do on any of the other days of creation. This is something that you will comprehend. First, He created it, and then He gave it His blessing. Take a good look, for as you can see, He did not bless the light. He did not bestow His blessing upon the night. He did not bestow His blessing on the moon. On the fifth day, God began to pronounce blessings. On the fifth day, God began to create the living things that would inhabit the earth and bless them. Because you are a living thing, God has showered his blessings upon you. You are blessed to be alive. You have been grumbling about it all week. And it is true that you experienced pain and disappointment. However, that is in the past. Just remember that in the instant God made you with his own hands. You were already a blessing. You are blessed to have a breath, God's breath, because he breathed into you to give you life. You are blessed because he made you at the very end. After all the other creations, you are a creation made by his hands. Genesis 1, 20 through 25. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing, with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground 
and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. You see, God not only blessed you, but he formed you as well. When God instructed the land to grow plants, the land did so. When God instructed the waters to produce fish, they did just that. It was only for you that he went above and beyond what he did for the birds, the worms, and so on, to do something he had not done for any of them. Until this moment, he had only made things via word of mouth. He had to get his hands dirty to create you and me. He had to dig in the dirt himself. Who are you? Why do you think you are so special? Something so special that God would reach down and touch the soil. Your conception was not a random act of nature. God had a hand in it. He was compelled to get his hands dirty in the process. God put his arms up to his elbows in essence. I want you to know, no matter how bad things are going for you right now, whether you are sick, depressed, or unloved, you are special. You were given preferential treatment by God over all other creatures. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is similar to the explanation given in the New Testament for the illustration seen in Genesis 1. We are God's handiwork. Remember that he spoke the Son with one word. You were made by him with his own hands. As Paul points out, you were handcrafted by God. That is all you need to know, that he joined you. You were fashioned by hand by him. You are not a machine made in a factory. You are not a product of a factory or a mass production line. Rather than having to fit in with something else, you were molded by someone who knew you even before your frame was created. Is it not even better to know what is coming after that? The Bible says we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Does it sound like you have been left to fend for yourself by God, or has he not given you the tools to succeed? You were made for praise. Do what you were created to do. You were created to serve God, not to worry about your circumstances. Cliche as it may sound, you should believe that you can fly. He is the potter and you are the clay that he works with. Every day he is shaping you and he is always patching up the imperfections in your life that cause you to feel inadequate and insecure. You fit into this environment like a fish in water, a bird in the sky, or something growing out of the ground because you were designed to do so. To move in the judgment of your enemy is an insult to your God-given identity. Because you were not built for insecurity, you are finally emerging from your prison today. You were created in God's likeness. How do you know what you were destined to do? I will tell you how. You cultivate a relationship with your creator via prayer and thanksgiving. Because you were so preoccupied with something that was not designed for you, you will never find out what his hand is capable of doing. This is because you are a distraction to yourself. God, on the other hand, did not create the sky and the sea for birds and lobsters to lounge around in and bask in the rays. You will have to move in it. You have to move in the way you were designed to. Taking charge is your responsibility because you were placed in this position by God. This is the time of year to get out on the sea, take to the air, and take charge of the atmosphere in your heart. Worrying about the future is not what your mind was created for. Your marker holds the key to your future. He has the finest plan for your life in mind. 
you need to stop worrying and trying to be in charge of everything and look to Him for direction. At no point throughout your time among the pigs will you lose sight of your royal status. It is time to return to your father and seek forgiveness, just like the prodigal son. Fortunately, he will accept you back with all of your imperfections intact and make you whole once more. You were created in Christ Jesus to accomplish good deeds in the image of God. In other words, no matter what situation you are in right now, financial difficulty, a shattered marriage, unemployment, suffering, and so on, there is always hope in Christ. The answer is in God's hands. The Spirit of God revealed what was under the surface. Right now, I believe He is bringing it up to let you realize that moving in your purpose in life is what will ultimately bring about your redemption. So, when things become a little messy, realize that your Creator was aware of it all. Only He is able to perceive the full image, while we only see the fragments. On the second day, He knew what to make, so that what He made on the fifth day would have a place to stay. He understood whom to let go of you in order to make room for the new people that entered your life. He understood just what kind of setbacks to subject you to in order to get you to the point where He could use you effectively. I'm curious if the birds and fish who were created on the fifth day can teach us anything. We can learn to move in the way we were made for. Is your fear preventing you from recognizing your own power? At this very moment, the Holy Spirit is hovering over your heart. He is bringing things to the surface. Even if some of it is distasteful or strange, you must have faith that the one who speaks, our God, is aware of the truth hidden beneath the surface.